jumping right in, you're the man behind this festival, the Chicago South Asian Film Festival, and you've been influential and very well connected with numerous, you know, social and South Asian communities and events. So where do you kind of get this influence from and the drive from to continue putting on these type of events? Wow, uh, Malaika, that's a, that's a great question. And first of all, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with me today. Um, well, you know, um, I would say, you know, it's my passion, which really, really drives me um, about films, stories, and most importantly, about people. You know, that that really drives me and that energy comes from that, that whole core, which I have inside. And I wouldn't say it's just me who is handling the entire festival. We have an amazing team, a uh, team of committee members, the board members, Kate Kiparik, Amit Rana, Arup Raha, and my wonderful team, everyone together, we put the festival together to really, really amplify South Asian stories, voices to the rest of the world. Uh, our whole goal is that, you know, hey, when we bring in the filmmakers and their stories and messages from all over the world to Chicago, we are giving them a platform to showcase, you know, their message, their, their emotions, uh, pushing boundaries at times, and really, really making sure that uh, we cultivate the audience who doesn't see cinema as just a commercial cinema, but even beyond that. So that's basically the drive I get. Uh, you know, when you said, how do you get the drive? You know, just rolling that film in that big screen when everything comes together, that itself is such a fulfilling experience, especially as a festival director um, of Chicago South Asian Film Festival. I feel that, you know, we have really, really accomplished to bring everyone together and these wonderful stories to the rest of the world. Yeah, and feeling like the gateway between, you know, South Asian culture and arts and entertainment and the West is, I feel, a really cool feeling, right? Absolutely. I think. You hit the nail there. You know, I think uh, there is so much, you know, I, I mean, people say for no reason, right, that America or, or you know, U.S. is a melting pot, right? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a conglomeration of cultures and people from all over the world have an opportunity, right? And, and that this is the land of dreams where people really see their ambitions, their passion, their dreams, you know, being fulfilled. And through this festival, we encounter, or we actually capture 12 South Asian countries, so it's a whole South Asian stretch where we bring, where we have lots of synergies as well as lots of differences, which we portray through the festival. There are certain things which people here in US and states have not seen it. And then when they see in the film, uh, they really see that, you know, how the rest of the world sees, you know, the stories in a different way. So it's just getting different perspectives, different engagements and different conversations as you said, you know, how these stories come to the West and how that the whole synergies come together. And it's it's very fulfilling. Yeah, and speaking of, you know, CSAFF is one of the largest, most influential film festivals in the country. Um, what do you feel that you've brought to the festival as the festival director? Wow, that's a great question. Um, first of all, you know, I think... Uh, I think being the festival director, before festival director, I am a movie buff. I, I really, really enjoy movie. When I was little, when I was a kid, I used to watch tons and tons of films. My parents had to like stop me not watching the TV, that you're watching way, way too many films. But I think that's where, you know, I started my interest of films and just connecting stories from all over the world. I'm just a very... Uh, naturally curious, inquisitive person who really want to understand how different cultures, different people interact throughout the, throughout the world. And that kind of led me to really dissect the story um, and people's life and messages. And then when I used to watch a film, I still remember um, I used to have a popcorn in my hand, you know, and, and, and watch a film. And film has such a power that and, and that can take you anywhere in the world and whatever you want to be. You can relate to the characters in the film, which are so real. And, and that's where I think I developed that whole taste of storytelling, 
uh, messaging uh, messages of people, you know, coming together. So as a festival director, and you know, of course, I curate and program also the films for Chicago South Asian Film Festival. One of the things is about the ethos of what I bring in is about filmmakers and their stories. So that's very core to me. As long as you know the story is to its core, the honesty which a filmmaker is bringing to the film. And at the same time, you know, there is a different variation. You know, the filmmaking is a very complex aspect. There are so many things which goes into filmmaking. So when we see a finished product for maybe an hour, if it's a feature film or if it's a short film, even if it's a five minute film or a two minute film, there is a lot happens behind the scenes. And that that have really like I dissect that and that I bring into the programming. So my programming, which I really bring uh, to the festival is encompassing different genres, different themes, uh, which we try to bring in messages to the people. And at the same time, you know, how every frame is framed in the film. So, so that's basically, you know, what I bring to the table, uh, our team, programming team, uh, you know, our, our curator who is there, our consulting curators, experts in the film area, we see all the films which get submitted every year, we go through a rigorous programming process, we have a very healthy deliberation internally, and that's how the entire programming comes into life. That's really cool. And kind of jumping into my next question, what do you think the impact or the influence of the film festival has been on the South Asian community, not only in maybe Chicago, but the entirety of the United States? Sure. I think um, <clears throat> the film festivals are there for a reason. You know, we are in this in this day and age where everything is on OTT platforms. Mm -hmm. Everything is, you know, either, you know, on your TV. And now even people hardly even go to theaters because everything is just available, right? At, at a demand to it. So while we are in this world of this OTT platform and, and streaming giants like, you know, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, how do festivals really survive? And I think the beauty of that is people interaction, People get to meet each other. People like to see the films, um, get into the meaningful conversation right after the film with a filmmaker or an artist. And that is the real beauty of the film filmmaking. And I think this film festival, through all of these aspects, has a really, really good impact, you know, not only just in the city of Chicago, as you, as you said, but all over U.S., because people actually come from all over U.S. and in fact, all over the world, bring in their own perspectives take something with them while they go go out of the festival to, to their respective homes or countries. And at the same time, you know, there is a there is a great cross pollination of thoughts and artistic uh, artistic uh, interactions, which really, really are very meaningful, which happened during the festival. I would say that Malaika, you know, in this day and age, you know, where film festivals are there, they're supporting the city of Chicago in a way that, you know, Chicago, I, I mean, you'll be surprised to know that there are 50 film festivals in just the Chicago land area. Isn't it crazy that 50 film festivals and Chicago has really become a mini production hub where yeah. you know, people are just, you know, coming, uh, producing their films. And City of Chicago has been so kind that, you know, they have been giving platforms, you know, monetarily, financially, as well as in other ways to all these independent artists to really, really like bring their dreams to reality. So I think that's my biggest take that, you know, when you spark this meaningful conversation and have that, that one thing which someone can take it out of the festival, be it a story, be it a message, or some learning from a filmmaking aspect that creates a ripple effect throughout the nation, as well as to the city of Chicago. Yeah, and kind of speaking of the festival itself, you know, you were mentioning that there's so many different film festivals in the Chicago area, but specifically for this one, you're, you're on the ground 24 seven, you're kind of working the festival. Where does that energy come from to continue doing that work? Wow, yeah, you know, lots of coffee, Red Bull. <laughs> uh, just kidding. You know, I think the energy aside, it comes from the core. 
um, it's a it's it's I would always say people it's a it's another full time job if you are doing anything else you know festival takes up your entire time because it's a big production uh, you know from from different aspects of programming filmmaking and it's also putting an event together it's hospitality it's operations it's logistics it's celebrity handling it's uh, it's you know it's your it's your master classes it's everything just you know. Uh, captured in one capsule, right? It's as I call it, like as a festival steroid capsule. Uh, so energy comes from, you know, just your inherent passion to do something where you really, it's, it gets tiring, you know, and not for just me, but for the entire team. But why they do it? Because at the end of the day, they feel that, you know, they're they are, they are aligned to their artistic goals. Not everyone would like to, you know, do something, but at some point they want to be connected to some of the artistic forms and the festival gives anything and everything which you really want to do during those festival prep days or during the festival time. And I think that's why the energy comes from. And, you know, and also I would say when you put the festival together and when you see things uh, coming together, when all the filmmakers really appreciate the hard work, which is gone, and they are very, very grateful, you know, while putting their stories and films out to the public. When you see community coming together and, and appreciating this hard work, I think that really boosts your passion energy from inside. And I think that's where, to me personally, the energy comes from. Okay, that's that's great to know that steroid energy capsule is a great metaphor, I feel like, to describe kind of in the entertainment industry, the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so going into my last question, it's a bit of a two part question. So next year is the 15th anniversary. What do you think you're going to bring to the South Asian Film Festival for that anniversary next year? And then the second part of my question is more personally for you, you know, being someone who's in the corporate industry as well, but also in arts and events. What are you personally doing next, you know, over the next year or next few years? Wow, that's a that's a two part, very very loaded question. But yes, hopefully I'll be able to answer that. Um, <clears throat> for the fifteenth year, so before I go, let me just give you highlights of this year. What's happening coming up? You know, next uh, next week, um, we have hundred films coming this year and two hundred artists and celebrities making their way to Chicago. So it's going to be definitely huge festival. We have an amazing panel discussion which we have termed as East Meets West. These actors, there are four, five actors coming from all over the world, different continents, coming together and sharing their journey and views, their synergies and their challenges and struggles, as well as, you know, their, their, their experiences in the artistic journey. Apar Shakti Khurana, uh, Rasika Dugal from Delhi Crime and Mirzapur, um, uh, Richa Murjani from Never Have I Ever, Samrat Chakraborty, Sarvat Gilani from Pakistan. So a lot of people are coming together and bringing and, and bringing their best, you know, for, for the audience. Uh, we have Manish Mundra, who is a director and a producer, who is taking a master class on film. And he's also making his directorial debut film through the festival this year. We have about 33 world premieres this year, having through the festival about 22 uh, North American premieres and 50 Chicago premieres happening at the festival this year. So a lot of activities are happening. Uh, we have a Bollywood after party, you know, one of the nights for people to hang out. We have, we have press conferences, we have filmmakers lounges. So a lot is going on this year. So I, I, I feel that, you know, 15th year, you know, next year, when you ask, you know, it's coming up, it's going to be a very special year for all of us. And, you know, everyone is asking us the same question that, hey, if this year is so big, what's happening on 15th year? And, you know, certain things, you know, we'd like to keep it a surprise. But I would say that next year would be something special where we really, really like be bringing a lot of industry professionals uh, to the festival to really create that marketplace for artists and filmmakers to really, really uh, make, you know, their projects happen through the festival. So either they learn something or they bring something together or they connect with people um, to, 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 to make that happen. So I think that in terms of programming will be still coming very strong with our programming and lineup of the films uh, with the filmmakers, artists, celebrities will definitely have some great talent come in to really like talk to people. And we will have some surprise, you know, uh, events throughout the festival. So at least, at least that's what I can share with you, you know, currently. And personally, uh, sorry, I'm 
doing a long-winded answer for all of this. Um, personally, you know, I, I'm a very corporate guy. You know, I am. Um, I have a, my law education. I am an engineer. You know, a business education. But my heart lies in entertainment. So I always feel that you know, once you know, I have mastered some of the intricacies of filmmaking, entertainment. Next for me is really getting into a big production houses where I can really uh, amplify the creative aspects of a lot of artists and filmmakers with all my experiences, which I've gained over the years. At the same time, um, the, the contacts and the network, which I've created over the last, I would say more than a decade in this whole film world, how I can bring everything together to really, really speak uh, and, and bring something very innovative and useful to the community, uh, especially to the artistic community. And at the same time, how I can uplift wherever I live, you know, whether it's uh, it's US, Chicago, or somewhere else down the future, how I can really uplift the artistic scene of a, of, of a place, of a country. Uh, and, and that's something I feel that, you know, that's really a big uh, step for me for next year, getting into a very, very uh, strategic, visionary role in the field of entertainment and events. That's great to hear. I'm hopeful to see kind of what next year looks like, you know, in terms of events and panels and workshops, etc. for everyone in the entertainment industry. Um, and thank you so much for all of your work that you do with the Chicago South Asian Film Festival, kind of bringing that representation to the forefront is so vital and important to push that representation forward in the West as well. Um, so thank you so much for all of your work and it was great speaking with you, Jigar. Thank you. Thank you, Malaika. Really, really appreciate your time and great, great interview and great conversations. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you.